Atocera is a great piece of software that allows you to turn almost any computing device into a retro gaming system. So we can install it either as a portable USB drive or onto the actual hard drive embedded in your PC. So let's have a look at both of these methods to get you gaming as quickly as possible. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. In one of my previous videos, I was having a look at one of these thin client machines. And, and these are basically just a, a reasonably low powered PC built into a nice neat package. And we got some good Linux performance out of it and we were having a go at some retro gaming and we saw that that was quite good. But at that time I, I, I thought that probably the best use of this would be as a dedicated little retro gaming machine. And that's what I'm going to have a look at today. Now we're going to use a package called Batacera, which is a Linux based um, front end, but that does actually give us very good performance on, on really any PC, um, but especially on these sort of um, older, um, less powerful machines. Now Batacera itself um, does install itself as a little portable USB drive. And of course that's what we're going to start off with. But um, better than that, we can actually then get it to install itself directly onto the hard drives of, of any PC that we want. And that will then turn it into a dedicated gaming machine. So as soon as you turn your PC on, um, that will then be straight into Batacera and we can do some retro gaming. So that's what we're going to have a look at in today's video. So let's go and have a look at Batacera itself and then get started on installing it. Batacera is a completely free retro gaming system that you can install onto a wide range of different devices. So if you browse over to batacera.org, you'll find the project website, which has lots of information and docu documentation to help you set up and fine tune your installation. So if we go to the downloads page, you'll see the full range of supported devices for, from PCs, to Raspberry Pis, to lots of other single board computers, Android TV boxes, and, and basically anything that can run Linux. Now, Batacera is actually a completely self-contained Linux distribution, and that's been tailored to run a wide range of console and computer emulators using RetroArch as its core software. Now, as it's effectively its own operating system, we can create a Batacera bootable drive and then plug that into a compatible computer and that will instantly turn it into a retro gaming console. Now, one of the great features of this approach is that if we run it from a portable USB stick, then once we remove the Batacera drive, the computer will revert back to its normal state as either a Windows PC or a Mac without disturbing the computer's original setup. Now for Raspberry Pis and similar single board computers and devices, the Batacera boot drive that we're about to create will actually become the system's main boot drive. So you'll need to make sure that you use a big enough SD card to hold this operating system along with all of your games and media. Now, but as we'll be using this with a mini PC, I'll also show you how to transfer the Batacera operating system onto the internal hard drive to give us that extra storage space. So to get started, we simply need to download the boot drive image for our target system. So once that file's downloaded, we need to flash that onto an SD card or a USB drive. Now, if you're not familiar with that process, do please have a look at my previous tutorial, and I'll put a link for that in the description down below, and that will show you exactly what to do. So once we've got that ready, you need to pop it into your PC or your Raspberry Pi, and then start it up. Now, if you're on a PC, you'll obviously need to make sure that you select the right boot device, so do go through that process. But once you've done that, then Batacera should start itself up. Now it does go through a little bit of preparation as it goes through that, and you'll see that happening. But once that's over, then it should go through a number of startup screens, um, little animations. And then eventually, um, that will drop you into the main Batacera interface, where you'll be able to see your various systems, and we're now ready to start setting this up properly. 
So Balacera is pretty good at picking up on game controllers. So if you've got one plugged in, you should be able to navigate around. So we have our left and right, obviously. In, in Balacera, the A key, or the, what well, we'll turn the south key on your, on your controller, the bottom one, um, that will do select. And then the B key, um, or the right button on your controller, will do the um, back out again. Now, although it is generally set up pretty well, it is worth going through the full mapping process. So the start button on your controller will bring up the menu. And from there we can go into controller and Bluetooth settings with the A key then to select that, A to collect the um, controller mapping, and then we can go A again to select that. I just simply hold down a button on my controller it should then recognize that. And now we just go through each of the buttons and press them to map them to the various functions. When you get to the hotkey, the best option here is to press the select button. Now what the hotkey does is that when you are in a game, it lets you press the select and start key together, and that will then exit you out of that game and back into Batacera. So it is important that you know what you're doing here. So the, the default is to press the select button, and that will set that up for you, and then okay for that. And our controller is now fully mapped. So if we come back out of that, so using the B key to come back out of that one, the next thing we need to do is to really get it connected up to the network. Now, um, if we go down to network settings, so my um, little PC here is plugged into my Ethernet connection, so that's already set up. But if you're working through on Wi-Fi, um, by, by default, Wi-Fi will probably not be enabled. So you first of all need to enable your Wi-Fi by, by selecting this option. You will then need to go in and select your Wi-Fi SSID, so that will let you connect to your particular network. And then of course you'll have to go in and enter your password. And after that then you should be connected to the internet. And what that then lets us do is if I come back out of here, is we can go down to updates and downloads and come in here and we can start then checking for updates um, and and starting those. So it's worthwhile just doing, making sure that you do run an update just to make sure that um, everything is entirely up to date and then come out of that. And then we can just leave that as it is for now. So coming back out of here again, sometimes you will find that you need to do a little bit of system setting up. So if we come into system settings and select that, you may find that your um, especially your sound and video, may not be working quite as they should be. Uh, so at the moment, um, you'll, you'll, by default, everything will be set to auto and um, Batacera will try to work out the best um, settings for you. But if you find that certain things aren't working correctly, um, so sometimes with this mini PC, it does not collect, select the correct output on my um, on my, on my device, I've got two video outputs. So I come into here, you can see that I can then force it to use a particular display output. But I'm just gonna leave it at auto for now. On your audio profile then, you can then, if you come in here, you can select various audio outputs, depending on how you want to, to have that um, come out on, on, on which port you want that to come out on. And as well, you can select different audio profiles depending on um, how you want the audio set up inside your system. Now, there isn't really any right or wrong answer here. Um, you need to find one that works for you and the particular way in which you're connecting up your screen and your um, speakers. But just make sure that you do go through that and get everything set up just the way you want. So after that, um, we really are ready to play some games. Now there are some default games loaded into here. So if we come along, you'll see that we have two PC Engine games, um, we have two NES games, and, and so on. So if, if, if we select one of these um, systems by pressing the A button or, or, or the South button as is labeled on these ones, then you'll see here we have a list of our games. If we select the game, we should then find that we can go off and play this Super NES game. So at least that confirms then that everything is up and running and we've actually got the ability to play these games. So the next thing to do is we need to finish off the setup, but one of the things I'm going to do first off here is of course I want to get this um, put onto the hard drive on my mini PC. 
So I'm going to do that process first and just take you through that. And again, that will be the same then if you're doing it onto a, a, an old PC um, or, or sort of you want to install it onto an old Mac or something. But what this will do, it will actually install the Atacera Linux operating system as the default boot device on your hard drive. After that, we'll come back in again and we'll do some more setup. And again, that setup that we'll go through and loading in games and everything, that will be common then to whether you're running it from your hard drive or from the little SD card. So let's have a look at getting this onto hard drive. So from my main menu, if I go into my menu and come down to my system settings, and if I come down to the bottom of that, you'll find that there is an option here to install on a new disk. So if I select that, we now need to select a target device. So if I select that, you'll see here that we have the various drives that are listed um, in, in my PC. So the one that I want to use is this SSD drive, this 120 um, gigabyte SSD drive. So if I select that, the target architecture then, if I come in here, is going to be, if I come down here and select that, I want to put this onto a, an x86-64, so that my little PC here is a 64-bit Intel device, so I need to select the architecture that I'm going to run onto. But again, you can see that if, if you were wanting to install this onto a, a hard drive connected to your Raspberry Pi or something, then you would need to make sure that you come up here. So the Raspberry Pis are these BCM devices, so you will need to have a look at which Raspberry Pi you are running. Um, so the various versions use different versions of this BCM uh, system on a chip. So do make sure that you select the right one for the device you're working with. The other ones, of course, then are really sort of listed by their by their type. So we are going to um, target our x86, our 64-bit Intel device. And then, of course, um, we are going to overwrite that hard drive completely. So anything that's on that hard drive will be lost. If you have Windows or I have actually got Linux installed on this PC uh, from the previous video, um, it will be overwritten. So, of course, it is saying do make sure that you want to do that. And then we need to go down and actually install that. So at the moment, it is going to um, download some software. Um, it will then go off and format the drive, install the operating system, and that then should let us boot directly into Batocera when we turn on our device, rather than having to go through the BIOS boot screen. So let's just let that run through, and then we'll come back when it's all set up. Now for me, that install process did take a little bit of time, and it did look like it got stuck at part way through at about 30%. But just let it run, and eventually you will get it saying finished, so just click OK for that, and then we just need to restart the system. And at this point, we should now be booting off our hard drive. Now this is a fresh install, so we do need to go through the setup process again. Now if we do have a look, um, if I go into my settings screen, you will find that if I come down to my network settings, where previously I had Wi-Fi enabled, it obviously is no longer enabled. So you need to go through your controller mapping, your network setup, your sound and video. And at that point, we should be ready to carry on now and get our gaming setup. So by default, Batocera actually has all of the emulators installed. We just simply need to add some games onto our hard drive or SD card into the right folder. So to do that, there are a number of ways um, we can actually get the files on there. So if we're all connected up to a network and we have our files, our ROM files, sitting on some other computer, we can actually do that across a network share. So if we come into our menu and come down to our network settings, what we'll find down here is there is something called a host name, and this is the default share name f that allows us to connect our computers over the network to the hard drive or SD card that Batocera is stored on. Now, while we're here, it's also worth making a note of that IP address. So that is the IP address of your Batocera machine on your network. And that we'll, we'll need that if we can't access Batocera through the network share name. 
So if we note these two um, bits of information down and then head across onto our main PC. So I'm on my Windows PC in Windows Explorer. And if I go up to my address bar here, if I type in our share name, and I need to type it in a, in a special way. So to get onto the network, I need backslash backslash, then it's Bato Sarah. I then need to go into the share folder. So this is where the actual ROM files are stored. So if I click on that, I should then get a list of folders coming up. And this is now talking directly to the hard drive or the SD card on my Batocera machine. So you can see here that there's a number of folders in which we can actually put things uh, into. So the actual game files need to go into the ROMs folder. So if I open up that, you'll see that there is then a folder for every system that Batocera can emulate. And we just simply need to drop our games then into the correct one on here. So I'm going to use some Super NES game. So if I come down here and I should find a Super NES. So there's my Super NES folder there. So if I go across to my games folder into Super NES, all I simply need to do is to grab hold of those, copy them, and then just drop them into my Super NES folder. And if I drop them in here, those will then get copied across on my network. And I have now installed some Super NES games. So let's just confirm that by going across then into the Batocera machine and seeing if we can find them. So we're back on the Batocera machine now. Um, but although we've copied those files across, Batocera hasn't yet scanned its folders to find them yet. So we need to go into our menu and down to our game settings and then update our games lists. And at that point, it will go off and scan those. And we should now, if we come across here to our Super NES, if we come in here, we should now find that we have those other games all ready for us to play. Now, now as yet, we haven't got any um, sort of uh, box art or videos for those, but we should find that if we want to go into one, so let's try our, our Super R type here. If we click on that, that should then run up that game so that we can actually play it. And there we are in our Super R type, uh, and that should then go off. And as you can see, we can, we can go through um, and we can actually play the game itself. So, so we know that um, everything is up and running and we now know how to transfer some of our games across um, over the network. Now the second method we're going to have a look at is actually copying them across using an SD card um, as a direct sort of file copy. So let, let's just go through that just so we have all those options available to us. So to use the file copy process, we're going to need to have a keyboard and mouse attached to our Batocera machine. So if you look down the bottom of the uh, main screen, you'll see that there is an F1 button there saying for the files. And this takes us into the file manager within Batacera. Now I've actually plugged my um, USB drive into my machine. And you can see here that if I come across, um, it's sitting in here and I have my games files ready. So in my Nintendo 64 folder, I have a number of game ROMs. Now, one thing I did find, um, quite often the game ROMs come as a zip file with the actual ROM data itself inside the zip file. Now, Batasar didn't seem to like that, so I do need to use the N64 unzipped files. But just like any other file um, managing system, I can simply highlight the files I want to copy. So I'm going to press Control c to copy those. I'm going to go into my ROMs folder. I'm then going to find my N64 folder inside my Batocera system. And I'm just simply going to copy those files or, or paste those files into here. So again, exactly the same as we've done before with our network copy, just copying the ROM files into the correct ROM folder inside our Batocera share um, file or share, share folder. So if I now quit out of this file manager, if I, and I, of course, need to rescan that those folders to get those games installed. So up to my games lists. And there, Nintendo 64 has now popped up. If I come in here, you can see that we have our games all listed in here. So if we come across to, say, Mario Kart, we should be able to select that and then start playing Mario Kart. So there we have our game starting up and we're into Mario Kart. So again, uh, just, just showing you how we can use either the network or the file copy process.
So really all we need to do now is to actually get some more files copied across and get those games all set up. Now one of the really good things about Batacera is that all of the emulators are all set up and ready to go. You just simply need to drop some games in. Or at least most of them are. Some of them do need things called BIOS files. And, and for legal reasons, the Batacera system cannot supply those to you as part of the normal download. You're going to have to go and get hold of those yourself. Now, again, um, again for legal reasons, I'm not able to um, tell you how to get hold of those. Um, but they are quite easy to find on, on the internet. Just look for Batocera BIOS packs. And if you're having any some real problems finding those, do have a look at my bitesandbits.co.uk website. And I'll put a link to that down in the description where I can give you a little bit more help in finding those. But basically, you'll end up with a pack full of um, various ROM files. Uh, and these will be your BIOS ROMs files. And these need to be copied across into the Batacera Share BIOS folder. And once we do that, then any of the systems which do need um, BIOS files will have them all. Now, obviously, the, copying them all across just makes makes it much, much easier so that you can just simply add whatever games you want and they just simply will work. Everything is sitting there ready for them to go. But of course, it is quite a big um, chunk of files, especially if you're copying them across onto a sort of smaller SD card. But if you have got the full set of ROM files, then obviously you can just simply copy across the ones that you want. But I'm just simply going to um, highlight all of these. So if you, if you get a Batacera ROM pack, then they're all in the correct folders. So I can simply copy those. I can then jump across into my Batacera share, share drive, go into the share, go into BIOS, and you'll see a few of the folders are already there. And I can then just simply paste them in there. And that simply copies everything across so that once that's done, I will have all my systems all ready to go with their individual BIOSes. So all I need to do is to drop my game files in. So that's pretty much all of our gaming setup. So we can play any games that we want. But if you look at our, our Batocera setup, it doesn't look very nice at the moment. The um, default theme is not very um, impressive. If we go into one of our game systems uh, and those new games that we have loaded in, we, we haven't got all of the artwork for those. So let's um, spend a bit of time now just making our game setup just look that little bit slicker. So, so to start with, let's have a think about getting hold of some artwork for our games. So I have some Super Nintendo games here and I don't have all the artwork for them. Each of these games, we can make some changes to them individually. So if I select, press, use the select button, but hold it down, as it says in the bottom menu there, that will bring up some options for this particular game. And you can see here that we can sort of um, do save gates and delete it and, and so on. And we can also add it to favourites. So if you want to make a favourites collection, then this is how you do that. But we also have an option here to scrape. And scrape means that we can actually go off and find some sort of box images and, and, and artwork, that sort of way. And that will just make it look better than just a little sort of um, generic ROM image in our games lists. So if I go to scrape, it will go off and it will search to see if it can find any media out there. And you can see that we have um, found a number of bits of box art. And, and Batocera can connect to um, the ScreenScraper.com and the GamesDB.com, which both are websites which contain the, the various bits of media that we will be looking for. Now, Screen Scraper, um, you can get sort of individual files from there, but as you see in a second, it is a subscription-based uh, system. But if we come down to the game's database, we can get hold of some of the same files um, for free. So if I come across and select that, we'll find that it downloads that image, and there we have it now sitting nicely in our game selection. But of course, doing it one by one will take a long time. So if I come out of there, into my menu, I can actually go to the main scraper settings down the bottom here. 
And from here, we, we, we can specify which database we want to scrape games from. So you can see there's a range here. Um, so a couple of these are subscription based, a couple of these are free, and, and some of them do have a bit of a rate limit. So if you try and scrape sort of thousands and thousands of games, it will obviously not do that. So we're going to be doing just a few games here. So the games database is, is fine for that. Um, our scraper settings, again, there, there's a number of different images that we can download. So you can see here that as the image source, we're looking for a screenshot. So that will be what appears in our lists of games. If ever we're having a list a, using boxes, we will use a 2D box. And the logo for the game then will be the one that fits into sort of like a selection wheel. So you can see we can, we can, we can do different, um, we can download different bits of imagery for our, our system. But I'm just going to leave that at the default settings. The filters then depend, it will tell Batasera which games to check. Now, obviously, once you have set up lots and lots of games inside this system, and there could be many thousands of games, so we don't want to keep checking every single one all the time. So here you can then limit it. So we can limit it to games which don't have any media yet. Um, we'll also limit it to just ones games that we've um, not, not, not scraped um, in the last few days. And then we can decide which systems we want to select. So I, I want to go into systems here because I want to select for all of the ones I've just installed. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to say select all. And once I do that, again, using the games database, I can come down to scrape now and our system will now go off. And you can see in the top corner, it is going through looking at all the games which need to have some media downloaded for them. And it is now downloading that media. So we can let that run through and we should then have a full set of nice artwork. So once the games list is, um, we, we've downloaded those, we will need to come back up and refresh our games list. So into our game settings and update our games lists. And there you can see, um, okay, it hasn't managed to get all of our games uh, for this, but if we come across here, we should find that quite a few of them. So it's, it's done all of our, our Nintendo 64 ones, um, our GameCube games. So it's got Luigi's Mansion, it missed out Ikaruga. Um, so again, some of these we will have to go through and perhaps go in manually onto them, hold for that, then come down to scrape, see if our scraper here can actually find some imagery. And you can see there that um, we have an image for that. The games database had one, but it didn't seem to want to get that down. But let's take the one from screenscraper.com. Let's pull that down. And there we now have an image for our Ikaruga. Um, and again, we, we, we can simply go through and have a look and see which ones got missed out and from there and, and just fill them in manually. Okay, so that will get our artwork downloaded, but we now want to make the whole system just look a little bit better. So again, if we come into our menu, Batasera uses something called themes. So if we come down to our updates and downloads, you can see in here that we have a number of things that we can have a look at. And one of those is our themes. So if I come into here, Really, all we all we need to do now is we we can have a we have a lit, lit long list here of different themes that we can do, and what these themes do is that they put a, a different look to the whole Batasera in, um, interface, and really it's a matter of just going through and seeing if you can find one that that really appeals to you really that there are a wide range of different sort of themes so if, if we come down um, let, let's see what this ES theme reload um, looks like so if I select that one I can install that so of course it will now go off and download that so it can take a bit of time for these themes to be downloaded. If you have a look at the theme display here, you can see that it does tell you how big the download is. So this ES theme reload is actually a two gigabyte download. But once that's downloaded and installed, it's now available for us to use. So it doesn't automatically enable that theme. So I can, from this all list, if I just go across to the right, you can see there that I have a look at um, what themes I have actually installed. Now, if I want to apply that, I then need to come back out of here to my main menu and then go up to my user interface settings. In my theme set, I can then select that 
and then I can then select the one that I've just downloaded. So AS theme carbon is the default theme and AS theme reload is the one I've just downloaded. So if I select that and then come back out, we should now find that our Batocera looks a lot different. Um, so here we are now, we've got a different sele um, system selection screen and you can see here that as we go through, it gives us different um, little um, animated screens. If I go into one of mine, so I know that the Nintendo 64, I know that the artwork has been downloaded for that. So if I go into that, you can now see that we have a, a selection list down the side. And as I come down here, you can see some of the artwork coming up. Um, the big box in the middle, which is missing, that would probably be for a video. Um, so we can actually download little videos of our games. And again, that would be through our scraper system as well. Uh, and a lot of the video stuff though, you do need to have a subscription for that. But if you do wanna have a go at downloading some videos, um, the way we do that again is to go back into our, our scraper function. And here we can actually change the um, website that we're going to scrape from. So let's say we go to the arcade database here. And if we, go into, if we select that one and then go to scraper settings, you can see that we now have video as an option on this. And again, a lot of these will let you download a few um, videos at a time for free. But if, if we come back out, we can again go back down here and we can go into our um, settings. So again, we, want, we don't want to ignore anything at the moment. So I'm gonna do a, a complete refresh of everything and see what we get. So again, we've got all of our systems selected. We're now gonna have a look at a different database, see if we can get hold of some videos, and we're gonna scrape those now. So you can see there, it's going off and having a look. So let's go back out of here. We now need to go to our game settings again. We want to update our games lists. And let's have a look and see if we've now got any videos coming in. So it doesn't look like we've got anything for our Nintendo 64. If we come into our Super Nintendo, so again, that was the default one in the system. Um, well, we've now got one now for our Super R-Type. So you can see there we now have a little game preview video in the system and Star Fox as well. We, we have a little video for that too. And if I come back out of that, um, I suspect when our Super Nintendo comes on, you can see there in our main selection screen, we now have a little video preview of that particular system. So, so very much um, the, the scraping system, you will have to sort of play around with that to try and get um, some of the artwork and videos all down. Again, if you do decide to go and subscribe to one of these websites, then you will get access to more of their content. Um, but very much then, it's, it's up to you to sort of work out and, and see what you want to do on that side of things. So that pretty much wraps up our installation of Batacera. So as you can see, we can either use it as a portable USB drive or on an SD card. We can now install it onto a hard drive to turn a system into a dedicated retro gaming system. And we, we can really then start playing around with a lot more settings. There's a lot more things you can do inside there as regards the various um, bezels to make the screens look better, your themes and so on. But hopefully you've seen that it's a pretty easy system to get up and running with. Um, everything is pretty much set up to go. Um, so you really just need to add your ROMs and then as I say, just play around with the look of it. So hope you found that useful. Do please have a go at setting this up on one of your machines. It is really worth it. If you've enjoyed this, please do like the video and do sub consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming making and gaming videos. I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.